and good afternoon everybody and for being there with us both uh, those who are here present and those who are connected online today the title is a road called proximity and it is a meeting which uh, celebrates uh, the 10 years of the foundation to tell you all the projects which have been realized in these years in more than 30 countries and also it has been organized in occasion of the uh, World Day of Volunteer which will take place on the 5th of December so according to the last report the number of volunteers is growing every year and in the world there are 862 million volunteers and their commitment has been estimated also in hours of work so it, it seems that they have worked like 61 million of workers uh, uh, full time today are with us uh, some uh, guests who are um, very well known and who are going to tell us also uh, some of their experiences of proximity. We have Cardinal Augusto Paolo Loiudice, Bishop of Siena, and also Monte Pulciano Chiusi Firenze, and also Professor Caselli, who is the director of of the Center of International Solidarity of the Catholic University and a lawyer Marco Petrini who is involved in Grupo India and also Vice President of the Ture Foundation. So thank you for accepting our invitation and uh, we shall start from Cardinal Iudice. We said that we are going to talk about volunteer service Therefore, Eminency, um, we ask you what is the importance of celebrating this day of volunteer service and what could be the answer of the Church to promote uh, a society which lives uh, a greater solidarity. Thank you all. First of all, to all those who are uh, um, here and to those who are um, connected in streaming. Uh, I know since long the community of uh, the Sisters of Charity, especially when I was a parish priest uh, here in uh, Rome, in Torbella Monaca, so I met and know, knew many of you. Certainly to talk of volunteer service is one of the aspects uh, even though it's not exhaustive of the whole mission of the church, but it is something which is within the, in the DNA of the church because uh, it is the typical expression of how a person is called to respond to the call of the gospel to follow Jesus, which is uh, a call for all Christians. And it is a practical way of translating this uh, a call from uh, theory into practice because we could uh, find many steps, many, many passages and many quotations in the Gospels. Uh, Jesus never spoke about, uh, we, ne never used this word. Uh, this word has been used uh, later on in history but for centuries in fact uh, the church was uh, um, the place uh, where uh, some services uh, of uh, charitable services uh, were born. Many services uh, were created to respond to the people who were in need. At the moment there is a situation uh, global uh, the, the whole society is involved in uh, protecting uh, the, the less advantaged, uh, 
And, but these things uh, many years ago did not uh, exist. So historically, we can say that all this work for the poor and the needy has been born within the church, like the hospitals to um, give hospitality to pilgrims and uh, to the sick and the poor. And then they were structured and became big organizations uh, and they changed completely. Uh, in reference with the gospel, we find the principle which is at the foundation of this work, which is the proximity with all fragilities. Because uh, Jesus uh, met uh, all the categories of uh, poor people, sick, uh, uh, deaf, uh, and lame. We can see many, there are many in the Gospels, and that's why we need to be there to shake a hand, to look in the eyes of a person, but just to solve the problem, because it is true that uh, Jesus made a lot of miracles, but he did not heal all the sick people in Palestine. And even the experience of miracles was a particular experience which was within a larger horizon, which was proximity. I think this is uh, the key to look at these uh, stories of, of the gospel, according also to what uh, Pope Francis is uh, telling us, especially when he speaks uh, all the time of the, of the poor who are members of Christ. Um, and for this, he has been also accused to exaggerate. But if we look at the pages of the gospel, we find exactly this. And for Jesus, it was important also the gesture of just touching a person or to put together mud and uh, saliva in order to heal someone. These are, um, these are all gestures which touch the person. So that's why we also should not just talk, but uh, to do something. And that's what he told also the disciples who were uh, listening to his teachings. And, uh, and they were following him, but in, in spite of uh, following him, certainly they were not perfect. And they had so many defects and so many limits uh, that are evident in the gospel. And uh, they were not uh, ashamed to speak about their limits in the gospels they wrote uh, later on. Uh, sometimes, uh, Therefore, uh, also looking at the world of volunteer service, which has grown and developed and organized, sometimes we risk to make a confusion between a volunteer service uh, and also, which is just volunteer service and some other services where there is also some um, income or uh, uh, there are expenses and in some organization, especially the big ones, there is the risk of uh, missing the original uh, will of uh, helping people uh, freely and um, in a gratuitous way uh, to follow also some personal interests. The church is showing uh, a road. Uh, in, in first of all, uh, referring constantly to the gospel of Jesus, uh, never letting this uh, uh, root, uh, because uh, sometimes it seems that the gospel is uh, far away, but the gospel is uh, the, the, the word for today which has to orientate our uh, work and life. And as I say always, the church has also to have that uh, um, cleverness, uh, uh, evangelic cleverness, uh, um, which we find also in the parables, uh, to be organized and to organize its work and its uh, charity. And the last thing, according to me, in the last years, one of the 
documents which were very clear about the, the charity is the first encyclical of Pope uh, Benedict. The second part uh, of Deus Cardas Est is uh, very clear about the organization of the life of charity. The first, certainly you read it when it uh, was issued in the first uh, years of Pope Benedict in 2005-2006. The first part was uh, theological, the second part was very practical and more than once I have uh, introduced it uh, to different, in different meetings and occasions. So we should not miss the opportunity we have as a church to be witnesses and also to organize all the, the world which is referring to us, which is around us and which has to be uh, seen and looked for also among the young people. Then I will tell you also later on something about my present experience. More than once uh, you spoke about um, gathering uh, strength, uh, churches, uh, civil society and institutions uh, to make a task force uh, involving all those who at different levels uh, um, are working in the same field. So I would like to ask you if uh, this um, what are the priorities for this? I may say, as I, I try to do, that uh, certainly we have to be aware that some problems, the big problems, uh, before which uh, we feel um, uh, helpless, uh, for example, hunger in the world or peace, and these problems are faced also at the world level, but then they have uh, influences also in the local, at the local level, I think of uh, uh, Rome, uh, where in some areas, in some neighborhood, there were uh, more problems than others due to these uh, big problems. And you know that you, you can't do anything alone. Because I think that uh, before a situation of great difficulty, um, someone can do something, uh, it's, uh, it's good, we have to do what we can, um, but certainly if we want to uh, change a bit uh, the situation of some people, because uh, the greatest uh, motivation of um, um, a situation of disadvantage uh, at social level is the history of the person. Those who are poor come from a situation uh, which were which was which preceded them and they are just uh, receiving the consequences of a long story of uh, difficulties. For me, those, um, what I have always tried to do, and I have suggested also to do when I was here in uh, Rome, where I was uh, following the formation of young people, who were thinking of uh, becoming priests, I always said the first thing uh, which we do when we go somewhere when we don't know anything, as it happens when we are assigned to a parish, because none of us uh, chooses the parish we are sent to, the first thing is to understand uh, uh, where we are and uh, to uh, see and see the reality which is around us, to know people and to listen to the people, which is uh, something which is also typical of our synodal journey. And then uh, you can uh, find out what are the main problems uh, and then go and look for the situations uh, that others, uh, other organizations have already uh, chosen and they are already trying to help. For example, if you see that there are already 
many people's uh, working for disabilities or for other things, uh, let them do, while uh, take care of those for which there is nothing yet. Immediately after that, you have to uh, build up the relationship with the civil institutions and also with the um, healthcare system of the local uh, area. And then the other area which is important are the schools. You have to go to the school and to know the school because through the schools you can reach all the families with all their problems. When I was a parish priest, the fact of uh, having the sisters of Saint Jean and Tid and the um, daughters of uh, Mary Auxiliatrice, uh, the Salesian sisters in the schools. I remember Sister Felicetta, whom you may know, from the nursery to, to the secondary school. Uh, this enabled us to pay attention to all the problems at, at all times in the life of the children and their families. I often uh, um, say that how was it possible that uh, in six months uh, for the COVID uh, we could um, build uh, a, a vaccination. What has changed uh, the situation of the world, thank you to the vaccination, which has been it is the first time in history that in a few months the whole world, all the scientists of the world, are studying the same topic. It means that there is a power there within humanity. If at the same, in the same way we could imagine the same uh, power used to solve the problems of migrants, if really we would like to um, work for this together, for these big problems, because we go to the moon, to Mars, uh, but we, we, are not, we are not able, how is it that we are not able to solve the problem of some thousands of people? If each one of us uh, was able to wake up the institutions, uh, and, and I don't want to speak about politics, uh, but I think that we, we as consecrated people, a priest, uh, a parish priest, uh, or uh, a consecrated person, or a lay person who is involved and committed, we can uh, help uh, to start a movement so it is better if we work more to unite our possibilities, our potential, and do it first. Uh, to, first we have to put uh, our strengths together. You have spoken about your commitment in the parish and also in the work uh, with the prostitutes and also with the um, moments. And uh, yours was, uh, you were always uh, uh, standing by the side of the poor. And I want to read something the Pope uh, wrote. The poor of all conditions uh, and everywhere evangelize us because they enable us to rediscover the real face of the of of God our Father. So I would like you to tell us something about your commitment and uh, some stories which you have known in which you have uh, recognized the face of God of the Father. There are many, many, and I find it difficult to choose among them because if I read my history as a priest from uh, 
1988, 1989, I never uh, looked for, as I always say, when we are uh, told, uh, called uh, the priest of the world or street priest, uh, um, seven years ago when I was a bishop, they asked me, are you the priest? You are the bishop of the gypsies. I am the bishop of the people of God. Because these uh, kind of uh, nicknames are limiting us. Because the people of God are those whom I met on my road, uh, as uh, the good Samaritan would say. And I have uh, lived uh, every year. It means uh, 34 years now. Uh, always there was a continuity, although in uh, um, different situations, because I was in uh, five different uh, neighborhoods in Rome, and now I'm in a different position again. But uh, always uh, and everywhere, uh, every time I was uh, uh, required to intervene because there was someone asking for uh, money or for something, I always uh, said, uh, let me understand, who are you, where are you coming from, uh, what is the story behind uh, this request. You don't get always immediately the, the answers, but I have always done this in all my parishes. In the three parishes I've gone first, uh, because um, the first uh, parish I was there, I, I was there as a priest, And then I had to go back there because I had the title as a cardinal there in, in this uh, in this area, so that uh, each cardinal is uh, connected to a parish, to a church in Rome. And uh, by chance, by chance, I was uh, uh, linked again to the to the same um, uh, parish where I was in the beginning. So. Every time we went uh, to, in, together with the young people of my parish, to go and see these people and uh, understand what they were, they were asking and why. In another area, it was quite a rich area, and there were um, many banks. Uh, this makes a difference. Uh, there were a lot of money in the families, but also in the area, um, shops and uh, factories and so on, and it was a completely different uh, situation. And I, I helped the young people to go out of our neighborhood, and we started um, going to visit the prison, the shelters for uh, children and for uh, women. And then when I came to Bella Monaca, there I I did no longer needed to go out because there were so many difficulties within the neighborhood, and uh, and you, you know well that there was a, there is a, a lot to do and you have to dedicate yourself twenty four hours a day, and I always thought that if you want to do something, you have to give your whole life to uh, what what is entrusted to you. I was there for eight years. And uh, they told me that uh, in uh, Torbella Monaca, one year uh, is uh, as a double value. So um, in those years, uh, I remember a lot of marginality of the Italians. In those days, there were not so many foreign people. Then I went uh, to the seminary. And I said, if they are asking me to go to the seminary, it means that there is something else. And then I had to uh, bring there my own experience. There also I tried to uh, pay attention with the seminarians to the gypsy and also to the prostitutes. And, and some people had to say that uh, the, the father, uh, the spiritual father of the seminarians take them to the prostitutes. 
And I said yes, because it is important that the seminarians know what is the, the, the reality of the life of people and their sufferings. And then um, there was a priest with whom I, I worked a lot, and I, because I had invited all the parish priests to look after to this problem um, and try to do something. While for other areas uh, there were uh, uh, many people taking care, for this uh, I felt uh, there was a, um, a hole and there was need to uh, fill this gap. And so I wanted to keep together the formation of the seminarians together with the pastoral work and uh, uh, practical service because uh, I can give a lot of theory, but uh, we need always to translate it in what is uh, uh, our practical experience. And I used to say to the seminarians, you will always have uh, uh, plenty of these problems to face, and you can't just say, I'm not interested in it, or I don't know what to do. And then about the um, prostitutes, uh, um, 25 years ago, there were many of these young women on the Salaria Road. And then afterwards, I thought to be attentive to my own name, to the area entrusted to me as a bishop, which was um, a different one. And uh, we organized a small group, which we called uh, RAB, and the name of the, of the prostitute uh, who saved uh, the people of, uh, of Israel and who is saved by them then afterwards, to say we get close. We are not going to do anything in the beginning, but we have to have an attitude of uh, uh, listening. And this father, this priest, said, uh, I saw these girls uh, very near to the church and I could not uh, even cross the road to go and talk to them. Then, after your, the experience made with, uh, with me, he was able to go there to talk to them, to, to greet them, to ask, how are you? It, these are not uh, silly things, because uh, for a girl who knows to be on the road and um, who may have accepted this situation and who is uh, compelled also to stay there and who knows what are the requests that a man gets close, usually. The fact that a man comes closer just to say hello, this makes a difference and touches um, their uh, armor uh, that they were uh, wearing to protect themselves because they are uh, obviously, if they are treated as objects uh, for pleasure, then they have to protect themselves uh, and they shield themselves behind uh, a hard attitude. And we can see that uh, on their face, uh, that uh, in the beginning the, the, there were some girls uh, who, whom I met the first time uh, and we could see on their face that they were suffering. And then we found a sister, a nun, who uh, was able to talk to their language. And I could see that uh, as, as soon as the, as the sister was able to talk to them in their language, then there was, uh, uh, the, the, their eyes were uh, brightening and, uh, and um, they started talking. And I changed. Uh, the face of these girls uh, after two or three months that we went there to um, to greet them and to stay with them, then they changed their expression. In particular, I remember one girl when I was in Torbella Monica, and and she is a miracle to me because 
I knew her when she was 17, 18 years old, now she's 36. And she had had a very difficult life and she was a prostitute uh, since she was 12. The mother was uh, addicted to drugs and the mother was without a nose. And I asked what happened. She's, then afterwards I understood that uh, it was uh, the cocaine she was using because uh, sniffing cocaine all the time then then your nose uh, uh, is uh, eroded by by the cocaine and so i was a bit uh, struck by this and uh, up to the end of the last days when she when the, the mother died uh, uh, close to the house of Mother Teresa and on the 4th of August in 2004 I took her to the to a community where she, she is rehabilitated and now and now she is uh, uh, she's better and, uh, and the girl now is in a community so this is a miracle but in many other cases, we have done a lot, and, but it was not successful. It was our effort it was not successful. But anyway, I will do it again. Perhaps, I mean, and see, we could see, we could show today uh, the nice uh, aspect of a, a volunteer service. So we want to listen to some people who are committed in um, the area of Rome. Good evening, everybody. I am Daniela Giuseppone and uh, it is 10 years I have found my faith again in 2018 with uh, Don Paolo Iudice. We started an adventure on the street with our sisters, the prostitutes. Uh, Don Paolo created a, a group of uh, nuns and priests and lay people and in the night we went to um, visit these women to give them a, a word of comfort and Don Paolo was for us a master, a teacher, because with his simplicity and humility he was able to touch the heart of these girls uh, in the night and um, what uh, for them was important was that we were there and we were there for them. And they knew that every Friday we were there for them. Don Paolo created this beautiful group uh, and we helped many girls, both economically as well as uh, uh, helping them to go back to their country. And they called us back to thank for what we did for them. Obviously, they were cheated, uh, um, brought here with uh, through cheatings, but they have also many beautiful projects. In the beginning, I just saw naked bodies and I judged them, but uh, uh, staying with Don Paolo, I learned to listen to them and to love them and to feel that they are my sisters. And uh, most of all, they were poor girls who hoped to come to Italy and uh, uh, get a chance for a better life. I wiped away many tears and shook many hands and hugged them because uh, the love we give them is uh, free. They were uh, exploited by their clients, by the pushers, uh, or the pimps, uh, and, but we were the love of God for them, uh, which were they in need of, and it was a beautiful experience. Uh, and we brought many of them uh, to the adoration, and uh, to see them kneeling down before Jesus was uh, extraordinary. Then we ate pizza together, and it was important for me, for my personal growth, uh, and for my faith also, from Don Paolo and from the girls. Uh, I have learned that uh, the love is the, the engine of the world and I hope to have a, a structure where I could uh, receive uh, the people in need because uh, uh, only seeing others being better I can be happy and we have to believe that we, each one of us can do a lot for uh, many people 
and to be that is the main uh, gift, uh, gift we can give. Um, good evening, uh, I'm Sister Vincenza Morelli of the Sister Society of Saint Jean Antide. I am in community, I have been in community for 54 years and I have spent all my life to the service of the poor. And the last years, since 1988 to 2011, I was at the hospital Spallanzani and I worked as a social worker at the hospital for infective uh, disease. I was uh, able to visit the patients uh, uh, whom uh, nobody else could visit. When there was AIDS, I went to visit, I could sit with the patients and we had long chats with the patients and I was always touched by young people who were affected by this um, illness, who had um, uh, were estranged from their family and they asked me to get in touch with the family and uh, to reconcile with the family and uh, this was always uh, something which uh, um, touched me deeply because uh, at the end of our days uh, what we do for uh, is uh, to re-establish the connection with the family uh, where our life had originated so what I tried to do was to rebuild the relationship between them and, um, and their family besides the social assistance I gave. And that's why I felt that uh, uh, besides the professional side of my service, uh, I felt I was really a sister of charity to help them to live their, their last days uh, peacefully uh, while uh, going uh, to meet the Lord at the end of their life. So we saw that uh, uh, the commitment of these people, the Elayele person and, uh, and the nun, and um, the courage of being a church uh, open also to uh, the, the, poverty, existential poverty, so we think of uh, young people who are discriminated, who are jobless, uh, who are victims of, um, who are bullied, or also those uh, who are uh, alone, uh, whom today is uh, um, highlighted also by the social media. So perhaps we should also create a task force which includes different generations. How could we work together with young people? Where there is a problem, oh, there is a need for someone who looks at it and who gives uh, answers to it. Um, therefore, I, I think over the last years of my life in a different uh, situation in comparison with Rome and its uh, outward outskirts, which is uh, Siena, which is a small uh, city, um, and uh, so rich in culture and in, in, in works of art and traditions of uh, uh, folklor folkloristic tradition, I think it's something really rare. It's so much concentrated and so rich. And also there, I remember when the Pope told me to go there, I said, Siena, what? And um, I, I said, what, what do I have to do with Siena? As, as when I said, what do I have to do in the seminary? Because uh, um, immediately I, I said that, but uh, it doesn't matter what, 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 what uh, then later on you understand and I have continued to do what I have always taught and done. And then I realized that it is true that uh, uh, Siena is not uh, a peripheric area, but there are many situations uh, with plenty of, uh, of needs and we can say the same thing. So we are starting again to um, do things we, we were not doing before. For example, in these months, we are uh, 
doing what we started in, uh, in Rome at the end in the 1980s, uh, for example, to go to the station to bring food to the people who sleep there, um, something which in Siena has never been done. And in these last months, uh, th there is a big community of Pakistani young people uh, who coming through the Balkan mountains have come to Siena, I don't know why, Perhaps there is a, they, they, come, they come there, one has come, has found a, a good environment and has called the others. So now we can see how much good there is among young people, because when I ask them to do something, for example, for the Day of the Poor, we organize a meal within the church, and in, in Siena it has had never been done, but now we, we did it. And, um, but I realized, as soon as I reached there, that there was a chat of the horrors, a small group of uh, young uh, boys, and the mother discovered uh, within the chats uh, of the child, uh, 14 years, uh, a dark web in which there was not only pedopornography but also homicide and children killed. And uh, those who have watched them say that they cannot forget it. And this um, started a network between the police and so on, but then and, and, and discovering this in the small villages on the mountains where the uh, boy, the young boys lived, uh, each one in its uh, farm, uh, in, her, in his own farm, in his own small village, um, they were uh, quite, uh, had quite a comfortable life, but we can see how the uh, internet has uh, globalized, a globalized experience, and uh, also the, the, the worst thing has become uh, available to all, and it's enough to click a button to get whatever you like, uh, the good and the bad together. And you can see whatever, uh, everything and uh, all the opposite. So peripheries are everywhere in the most beautiful cities and rich cities, as well as in the two peripheries. And also here I said one of the attention has to be the schools where the, the, the young people are in the schools. Now I meet the teachers of religion because today, according to me, they still are meeting young people. And you don't have many parishes in which students, young students, are still attending. There are some of them, but in the majority of the cases, the, the young people do not attend the, the, the parish and the church. Uh, you know that after the um, confirmation, they go away. So in the school, we can meet them. So um, there, is some, there is something which does not work in our itinerary of uh, uh, in initiation, uh, Christian initiation, because in reality, this does not uh, keep the people, but uh, um, keeps them uh, to a point and then go, they go away. So we should have a task force thinking, rethinking the journey of formation of catechesis. And um, where there is something which moves, I have seen it in Rome and I see it again, I always find people available among teachers, not just those of religion, also those of other um, teaching uh, topics and we get many people uh, ready also to uh, to do volunteer service because a, a good uh, teacher of religion can get in touch with uh, hundreds of uh, children and can be a leader uh, 
leading also the children uh, uh, to do some uh, volunteer service uh, and also for youth sports uh, and also other um, centers where the children can meet uh, and they can get together to play and uh, uh, especially to involve those uh, who are uh, um, borderline, if you want. Um, let, let us see what I always say is to uh, prevent uh, the fact that they deviate and to uh, keep them interested in what we do, organizing activities so that they may have uh, places where to go and where to participate, uh, building a dialogue with those who are responsible uh, with these uh, uh, activities. We are not going to solve all problems, but certainly we can uh, do something which uh, helps somewhere, somehow, avoiding, preventing certain situations from uh, verifying. And so there is, uh, sometimes I see to get um, to lose, I, I see lose the passion, the, the passion for this, uh, for this work uh, is not there. I understand it's not easy and it's not uh, easy to get started again once you have uh, let uh, things go uh, because uh, then uh, in the church there are only three, four elderly people and then uh, you don't have the uh, the energy, the enthusiasm to start something. I always say, do not have a big, big uh, buildings, uh, big institutions, because then you have to to defend them, to protect them, uh, and then you need a crocodile to defend them. But the risk uh, is. Uh, then, then, then you have to take care of the buildings uh, and you don't do anything for the people. And this is an old uh, model where there were uh, the castle uh, with the rich people within the castle and then the, the poor people all around. Uh, we need to be more outside the castle, uh, more than inside them. We, oh, we don't need to do strange things. Uh, we need the uh, intelligence to uh, re-educate ourselves uh, and to change uh, and to uh, open the doors, open to the territory and open to marginalities. And also we need some courage and sometimes we take risks because uh, we are still uh, living in places and in contexts uh, where we can, we can we can do something. And for example, the first thing I did was a meal for the poor within the uh, bishopric. And um, initially it, it was felt as something strange, but then it became the normal uh, evangelical way of uh, living uh, our Christian faith. So we spoke about young people. So now we let, um, we invite us to talk uh, Professor Marco Caselli, who uh, is starting from uh, Pope Francis, um, which says peace and human dignity and inclusion and participation highlight how much it is necessary to pass on not just technical knowledge, but also and especially um, human wisdom and spiritual wisdom made of attitudes and virtues uh, so that, that can be um, realized in a practical way. That's what you try to do with Chasey, with your association, and how you pass it on to your students. Uh, thank you. And good evening, everybody. I start saying uh, what is CESI. CESI is uh, a center for uh, international solidarity. The history is that uh, it was created in 2006 uh, after 
the intuition of the rector of the university, Professor Ornagi, and one of our professor of uh, medicine, Professor Kauda, uh, with the idea of uh, um, that, that uh, in the Catholic University we have some competencies, especially medical ones, which we um, put into action in our uh, hospital at the polyclinic, but we need also, there is a great need also outside, and many of our doctors were involved um, in a fragmented way in various projects of cooperation, so we said, well, let us try to create a system and organize a task force uh, to coordinate this effort. So in 2006, there was uh, this uh, Center for uh, International Solidarity, which started uh, with uh, medical attention, but then uh, we realized that there, were, there was need for uh, also for educators, for psychologists, for uh, experts in the international relationship, all competencies present in our uh, university. Uh, therefore, the commitment of the CESI expanded uh, with the idea of uh, valuing the many competencies already available in the university. Therefore, we started with uh, doing something. There are some needs, we have uh, technical competencies and we can uh, use them all over the world. But there isn't only uh, the uh, aspect of doing. We are a university, and in the university we do research, we create competencies, and also we teach, and we are in touch with young people. Uh, so um, besides uh, doing, we thought also of um, uh, educating. Uh, it's not just uh, the competencies, the te technical competencies, but we need also to uh, form uh, the spirit uh, and the uh, meaning, uh, um, the sense of uh, um, using these competencies for the good of uh, people and society, and the attention to human being is one of the main attention we have. So in 2009, we launched um, a project um, addressing uh, teachers uh, and uh, students, Charity World Program, with the idea of uh, taking our students outside the university uh, rooms and outside our own countries to experience uh, as volunteers. And in this experience, the, the students could uh, use uh, the competencies uh, they had uh, acquired at school and uh, do something. And uh, this had a great uh, and large development, um, thanks to uh, the young people involved. In 2009, it started with a project dedicated only to the students in our colleges, so a limited number of people, but their enthusiasm um, pushed us uh, to expand uh, this uh, possibility of participating also to um, all students of our university. And that nowadays uh, we have uh, had uh, 400 people who have uh, done this experience. Every year we offer this opportunity and we increase the number of places where the students can participate and uh, uh, often we are not able to uh, give an opportunity to all those who require to do it but um, it, um, it's a good uh, the young people are very much interested so we are sorry not to be able to offer to all these uh, opportunity. On the other side, we have the satisfaction of saying that there are many people who wish to spend themselves and their energies and get out from their comfort zone and do something for themselves, but also for others. Among the missions uh, and uh, things that you do with the charity work program. There is also that of the Sisters of Charity in some countries. So I ask you, how did it start? 
It started, uh, you could say, by chance or perhaps uh, by providence because um, we have uh, a very dear friend and a colleague who uh, did some of his uh, research in Ethiopia and uh, among uh, his relationships with uh, Ethiopia attempting to realize some projects, uh, especially cultural diplomacy, that is uh, to create a relationship with other countries uh, through uh, cultural initiatives. So we met the Sisters of Charity and we um, started, we felt um, in harmony, we had a common vision and common shared values. And in 2018, we um, included in Ethiopia the possibility of doing some uh, service there. Um, in this case, they were students, women, girl students, uh, prepared to be with the children. And this experience uh, brought uh, a mutual satisfaction. We were very happy to send the students there and uh, the, the students were enthusiastic about this and I felt also the sisters were quite uh, satisfied. An experience uh, like that was so beautiful that uh, we wanted to expand it and uh, we had uh, thought in 2020 to uh, do something also in India and Cameroon and everything was already prepared. Everything was already announced. We were already selecting the, the students and we had, um, we had 60 places and 300 requests we had received. But then due to COVID, we had to stop it. Now the conditions are back uh, favorable. And uh, we hope that in 2023, we, we are going to launch the, the possibility of uh, India for education and uh, Cameroon for uh, the hospital. And uh, we sent there some students uh, attending the medicine. This afternoon, we are uh, um, going on a journey called a road called proximity. What is for you proximity? Proximity is a word very nice, very important, but also difficult. It was uh, the, given the example that uh, we all have in our pockets uh, these uh, boxes, uh, and these small boxes uh, deceive us uh, because uh, we think that we are close, uh, because we reach everywhere with the Google, and virtually we can go everywhere in the world, and we elude ourselves that we know the world, but as uh, has just been uh, said, it's, it, it risks to be a flat knowledge uh, in which everything is the same. And the challenge is to uh, create a true proximity in which we are really close. To be close, we need to know, to know that there is someone who needs to, to be close. Uh, we need the courage not to stay on the other side of the road or not to look on the other side. And um, we try to create this closeness. And we, we propose our students something because they know many things, but now let us go and uh, do something in a true way with real people. I have an experience, a personal experience, when in when I was a student at university, it happened to me that I had the opportunity to do some volunteer service in Central Africa. I remember the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes when I reached there, immediately after getting off the, the, the plane and outside the airport, as the most um, touching time of my life because uh, as soon as, as I got out of the airport, I saw all that I knew. 
I, I, I had already seen pictures, I, I have already seen videos, I had already been told about Central Africa and what I saw was exactly what I had already watched, what I had already heard. Le shock was to say, oh, it's true, and it, it, it really exists and we want our students to understand that yes, we can see many things but it's only when we face them directly that we realize that what, what is the, the true meaning of living there. Because on, on, our, on our cell, cells, we, we, we can watch whatever we like. We watch movies, we watch music, we watch superheroes, or we watch poor people. What's the difference? There's no difference as long as we stay before a screen and everything is equally far from us and we need to get closer and uh, get over the screen and uh, feel, uh, feel smells, uh, feel the heat, uh, feel the, the environment. At the Charity Work Program, uh, more than 400 are the students who have gone uh, this, uh, to this experience. But what is uh, today the image people have of the mission and especially of this uh, area. I would say that, that uh, you are optimistic because you suppose that young people have a vision of this mission. My fear is that many of them have no idea of it, have no vision, but I don't want to generalize. We cannot talk of the young people in a general way. There are many young people, each one has his or her own fears and stories. Each one is different from our point of view, which is very limited. I see many young people, but they are university students. So we see plenty of different things young people who wish to know, who wish to risk to get involved, who are touched from what they see around themselves and feel the responsibility of the privileges they had when uh, were being born in our countries. And others who are absolutely um, in, in, indifferent to it. And I think that as educators, we have the uh, duty of trying to talk to all those uh, with whom we, it, it's easier to talk and also to those who do not want to listen to us, knowing that they all carry within a question about meaning. In some it's more evident, in some others it's hidden. Uh, and the other challenge, we are facing now is the COVID, is to get out of COVID. COVID, we have to be aware that has influenced our youth and it has influenced all of us, but especially the young people, and we have many different reactions. Some students, as soon as the university opened, they came back running because they needed to get out of home and meet others. And others who, although the, the emergency is over, they, they don't come to, to university and they still prefer the lessons online. This is the reality. Thank you, Professor Caselli. This image of volunteers uh, through the eyes of young people, we can uh, have a look at this image uh, through the testimonies of Sara and Marta, who are two young uh, uh, girls who have done some service. Hi, I'm Sara. I'm studying uh, education at the Catholic University of Milan. In 2021, I accepted uh, the uh, charity work program and I went uh, to do some service uh, at Pedro Arrupe in Rome. My decision to start this, uh, to have this experience was uh, due to the wish of uh, trying to do something for others and no other uh, experiences. In this time, I was uh, fully involved uh, in the activity of the center. 
at the center it is impossible to stay uh, at the margins you are very um, nicely welcomed and you are part of a big family in my time there i have the families to manage to take care of the children do the homeworks and uh, i help them to improve their english i also did uh, italian lessons for the mothers of the children and slowly they got confidence and they trusted me and started to dialogue and to talk with the operators it was a joyful time with the young um, children there, especially the minors who were there, adolescents. I, they shared their traditions, their passions, their dreams. And uh, thanks to this experience, uh, I met many people and I discovered different worlds. Today, still today, I remember this experience with joy and certainly I would like to promote this project of CESI. Hi everybody, I am here today because uh, I was asked to share my experience of uh, volunteer service. I went to Ethiopia in 2018 in Shire, and there I the Sisters of Charity Ascension and Ted who welcomed me to um, in doing my journey. So in I stayed there one month. And I worked with them and with other oper professional operators at the nursery school, uh, professionals and also volunteers for the uh, summer camp. It was a nice experience since the first uh, days for the way we were uh, welcomed, uh, both I and my companion, and also the fact of being in a completely different and new context we felt accepted and this helped us to cooperate in a nice way to all activities and besides the work we did at school certainly also the life the family life with the sisters of the mission it was a really a nice experience we were um, certainly welcomed uh, and we were asked uh, how the, 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 the day uh, had gone, what had happened, and this helped us to reflect on what we did, uh, also about the children, because it, it is also a completely different context from a professional point of view. And uh, so, this uh, uh, helped us uh, to use also uh, different strategies uh. and uh, the main thing was to uh, we wanted to go there and change the world but i have to say that uh, on coming back uh, the, uh, my idea was completely different because what we uh, took away was important and we changed our point of view. The strategy used with the children were important for us, keeping in mind uh, um, the local context uh, is certainly something which I take with me. And um, besides uh, working with um, different people, I have also asked to continue my research for my thesis, uh, considering this context. And in 2018, I went back in November to for a project of twins, uh, so that we we have a, uh, we have joined uh, 
the school there with the school where I was working in Milan and there I met other people and I was able to uh, exchange with uh, other people who were colleagues uh, with, uh, with the same way of uh, working and it has been very, very interesting. Therefore, it's a journey I advise to follow. It's enriching and uh, it gives us a lot of um, food for thought, compliments for this uh, opportunity you give to your uh, students. Sarah and Marta uh, certainly have touched the, the heart of uh, lawyer Petrini, so because uh, seeing you were young, uh, just a, a student, when you also uh, went to the mission um, together with Grupo India. So you may tell us something about your journey with the Jesuits and uh, who took you to other experiences. And uh, I, uh, I read that you met also Mother Teresa of Kolkata. Uh, yes, my heart was touched. It seems a coincidence, but uh, actually it's, um, it, it is not. But it is, uh, today it is the 3rd of December, the feast of uh, St. Francis Xavier, who is uh, a Jesuit and a patron of a mission. And um, I'm so happy so that today we are here together with the Sisters of Charity, Grupo India, and uh, um, I have studied with Jesuits since I was uh, five years old and I followed all the, my, my studies there. And then I met uh, a priest, uh, Father Mario Pesce, who taught me religion in, uh, uh, in the school and uh, he educated us uh, to charity. And I said that many times, in many occasions, that the teaching of Father Fran Pope Francis reminds me a lot of what Father Mario taught us because already at school he taught us to open our hearts to others and to put at the center of our faith and charity in all its dimensions. And this uh, 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 led in 1980, uh, the last year of my secondary school, uh, with other um, friends of our group, we uh, received invitation to go for Christmas to India. So we left uh, in 15 when there were no cell phones. And it was the first time uh, we got uh, the plane, and first time we went away from our home uh, on, at Christmas, and we went uh, to um, India, in Bombay, and then at uh, the um, border with Gujarat, at the margin of the jungle, where we had an experience of proximity, we can say, where we met uh, the children accepted under a shelter um, by a priest who was giving them the opportunity to study and grow. And from that experience, from that meeting with the Canossian sisters who um, gave us hospitality, we began the India group. Uh, it was just a group of young people who had gone to India, so it was the India group. And they started with a um, um, a support, financial support for students, which two characteristics okay, which uh, we still keep uh, uh, alive today, which is uh, yes, we give uh, an economical support. Um, and they, and they, in those days, it was just a few euros a month uh, to go to school, eat, and, uh, and uh, have the books. But at the same time, the opening of our hearts, not to one single child, but to that group of children, to those people who are far away, but whom we were supposed to feel close to us. And still today, we invite ourselves and those who support us to 
to go through this process of uh, opening, uh, uh, openness of the heart, especially now, when the, those who were far have come closer because uh, now they are here living in our country, this is a greater uh, challenge. And it is uh, certainly something very interesting because uh, there are many people participating, Father Pesce has sold a lot uh, everywhere, I involved uh, plenty of people all over Italy, and we are still uh, carrying out uh, his work with Grupo India, and we are supporting missions, not just in India, but in 30 countries in the world. We, have, uh, we are in touch with more than 90 places of uh, mission, many of which uh, belong to the Sisters of Charity, of St. Jean-Antide, and others belong to dioceses. Group of India and Foundation Touré, you say that the foundation, Touré Foundation is the working arm of the congregation, and you work the, also at the statute of the foundation. Could you tell us something about the foundation and this, uh, these last years, especially uh, talking to us about the project uh, of this um, um, these 10 years. Uh, I want to greet uh, Sister Nuncia, who was the Superior General who called me to um, put into action uh, an idea which I always shared in this process in which uh, the Church, uh, the world and society um, does not want to stay locked uh, within a, a structure. What I felt in India and in other countries is that uh, from outside the, 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 the walls of the convent, you cannot see, but when you go through, go over, and uh, you, you work closer, then there is a, it is a, a virtuous process uh, to do better something good. At the same time, uh, to give the, the possibility to religious institutes, uh, in this case, uh, the Congregation of uh, St. Jean Antide, to have an instrument uh, up to date uh, respecting the laws which have been uh, um, obtained also by those who struggled to do volunteer works uh, all over the world and in Italy. Uh, so some uh, facilities uh, for uh, the taxis and so on, and to have a, a nice structure which could involve the institute in cooperation with lay people and um, uh, more up to date. Um, up to some years ago, the movement was uh, from Italy to the world. Today, we have uh, one uh, world, uh, and also the consecrated uh, sisters are coming from all over the world here, and they are uh, the leaders of their mission, of the growth, uh, of the works in their countries, as well as uh, uh, all the cooperation is uh, um, finalized, is uh, pers pursues the self-sufficiency of our works, of our missions there. Uh, in this um, line, the foundation in the last 10 years uh, has uh, developed uh, not just the projects uh, organizing what uh, in the centuries the, the Institute uh, has been done uh, as a solidarity between different countries, but also um, uh, accepting experiences of other groups and uh, cooperating with the other groups. Uh, forming also the sisters to uh, um, to learn, to do projects, to cooperate, to be responsible, and also to um, welcome volunteers. And when I heard uh, the, the girls uh, talking, uh, obviously it was nice because it was organized, yes, with, uh, by CESI, but also by the foundation. With Chad, 
in, uh, and uh, in Africa, the Sisters of Charity are present, uh, have, have been present for many years uh, with attention to women. These hostels where the girls are accepted and are uh, prepared for their future with the attention of, um, of being close to their neighbors. So to the children, the street children, to those who live around the hostel. So there is a, a sharing which is already there at the time of formation. And it is very important that this project of Chad has been chosen for these 10 years of the foundation. Good evening, everybody. We are uh, representatives of the association Peace on Earth, a community of adoption. Uh, which works with the foundation uh, to support uh, the formation of the children at school, to be in touch with young generations, which is giving uh, good uh, results for uh, the um, spreading of the culture of adoption among young people. Uh, with me there are some uh, of the members of the association. I am Rosella Palmina. And Franco. And uh, we have some uh, members who are young and uh, who, who are coming from the experience of uh, the school project to show that together with, with young people we can build something important in this area. Good evening, everybody. I'm Lorenza, 46 years. I have uh, had the gift of spending some years in Africa with the mission of the first step was um, the mild Africa, that is um, the sense of um, origins of uh, forms, uh, physical sensation of uh, getting rid of one's certainties and to be naked, this is the sensation that goes deep down and God gives you a freedom to accept or not the change in your life. Those were years of great joy and many difficulties, but uh, to be in a world in which uh, the foreign, I, I was a foreign and a white among many black people, I remember that once at, um, in the church, I said, everybody is looking at me because I'm white and you are all black. For, for us, you are, but uh, someone told me, for us, you are Lorenza and Sop, and uh, it's you who see yourself like that. Another thing that I was touched by was the richness of differences, uh, starting from the sisters to the neighborhood. In the community of the sisters, uh, they were living together people from different nationalities, and the difference is not easy to accept, and uh, it makes us afraid, and sometimes we think that our culture is better. In reality, I have discovered, as I have uh, said uh, also there, that if you put aside your prejudices and uh, your uh, ideas, uh, if you face uh, all, uh, everything with simplicity, then these differences uh, can be enriching and uh, you can feel a, a deep love which uh, God gives us the opportunity to know. I am Umberto. I, I am a friend of the sisters and the volunteer and I have been a volunteer for many years. How did I start my friendship with the sisters? It started in 2006 uh, with uh, the testimony of Sister Michela, uh, which became a big friend, uh, and now she's in heaven. And um, her testimony uh, about her mission in Gundi, Gundi in Chad, in the south of Chad, and this uh, her testimony as, was about a, a nutritional center where small children uh, were uh, fed up. Um, and uh, she, uh, Sister Michela went around the villages uh, 
educating the, ch the, the mothers not to kill the children because when the mother uh, died, nobody wanted to take care of, the, of those children. So they uh, collected all these children which were not wanted uh, to save them. And uh, for two years I went there and uh, we tried to support them in very various ways. The first year I went there in 2017 and then um, after that I kept going. Um, it was a beautiful journey, rich uh, of experiences, uh, bad and good, uh, terrible and fascinating at the same time. And uh, it was a meeting with a person whom I, I have at heart uh, and who was no longer there. Uh, her, his name was Benan and was a man uh, with a leprosy and who was cured by the sisters and he gave his life to work with the sisters cleaning the garden of the sisters freely and, uh, um, and this person touched me a lot and there was a, a sparkle uh, in me to, to and I, I decided to keep, to keep going to Chad and I believe that also in the parish of St. jean it has been appreciated so much that the parish priest is supporting us a lot and in a short time we will create also a missionary group. This is what I have received from uh, Africa and from the sisters and I thank them a lot because uh, I'm happy and we are trying to make other people happy, especially the children. Thank you. Good evening. I am uh, Sister Monica Binda. At the moment I am in my country in Argentina. I had the joy and the gift of uh, being there at the beginning of uh, the to the foundation for me it was an experience uh, uh, we were the working arm of the general council it was a, a strong experience for me also because i am a social worker and this helped me uh, in my growth not just as a sister but also from a professional point of view and this was uh, very good for me and this was uh, this began uh, uh, from the needs of following up the projects, uh, the developmental projects, which, uh, as uh, Sisters of Charity, are we are following. I uh, this helped me a lot to be open to solidarity. I had. Uh, various uh, experiences of solidarity with lay people, especially the friends of Jean Antid. And also, I was had to, to look uh, farther on. There, there are many things I could say of uh, culture of death, but there is also a lot of uh, solidarity and love for the poor. Our charisma, the charisma of uh, Jean Antide and of the Sisters of Charity is a charisma which is uh, very up to date uh, because uh, it is about evangelization and human promotion. And I am happy of the development uh, that the foundation had in these uh, 10 years. And I am um, uh, touched to see how the foundation is uh, developing and uh, trying to give uh, new answers to the needs of the project of the Sisters of Charity. For me, uh, an important theme was the volunteer service for young people, although the first uh, committee had the mission of uh, uh, laying the foundation of the 
Curay Foundation. We did not uh, think much of the um, volunteer service, but we had young people asking to go on a mission service and uh, they asked for formation to go and serve the poor in other continents. For me, it was a very big experience to grow in solidarity and in the culture of life and to, to bring life and life in abundance. Uh, this is what I, I like. So we have stories of uh, proximity and daily gestures for our common house, common home. So you, we have a few minutes for the questions, and I invite uh, both the sisters uh, in the hall, but all of those who are online, if you want to write your questions in the chat. Meanwhile, uh, if anyone else wants to make a reflection, you can say something. One question I had it. To e appunto per parlare un po' so di questa uh, iniziativa, which is uh, the contest uh, Road Call Charity, which is an international contest. Avvocato, lawyer, could you may tell us something? Yes, we take the opportunity to bring on per rilanciare questa iniziativa proprio nell'ambito del decennale che si concluderà il 4 marzo dell'anno prossimo con la premiazione di questo concorso internazionale di segno, dura, fotografia, destinato a tutte le scuole di ogni ordine di grado in tutto il mondo, sul nostro sito internet della Fondazione. C'è il bando, c'è una prestigiosa giuria che è presieduta da Paolo Ruffini. The prefect of the, the prefect della for the per la comunicazione del Vaticano e uh, anche il pagno uh, di scuola in qualche modo ex alunno de, del Massimo my, uh, e tante altre persone and other molto competenti. People. And e quindi è molto importante che ci sia una diffusione larga della conoscenza di questo concorso che prevede anche dei premi importanti che saranno assegnati appunto nella cerimonia di premiazione qui a Roma o nei luoghi dove sono le scolaresche all'estero in collegamento, dicevo il 4 marzo, che, in cui ricorrerà esattamente dieci anni dalla fondazione della fondazione. There will also be an event before the 4th of March because there will be another webinar dedicated to the location of January or February. Questions in the hall or on streaming? streaming? Well, we have come to the conclusion of this meeting. We thank all those, uh, all our guests and all those who have taken part, have attended in presence and online, and Sister Therese for technical parts, and you, Sisters and Foundation, who has uh, organized this event.